Hello everyone, I'm back today with the third session of our 10 day C programming course. Please do watch the previous videos and make sure to attend the test if you have it. Now let's see today's topic which is setting up the environment. So in order to write the program, compile the program and execute the program, you'll, um, you'll need an IDE which is so here we'll be uh, seeing how to download and uh, install IDE or we'll be using code blocks here. So let's see how to do it. Let's go to Google and try to search for download code blocks. So now there's a first link, click on it, code blocks, download code blocks from here. You have to click on, there'd be a lot of them. Click on download the binary release. And now you have to select the uh, platform which you're using. So I'm using Windows 10. So according to that, I've selected. Now there are a lot of, uh, see, there is files, date and download from. Files will show that file which we should download. Date will show the date it was released. And download from will show you the links from which all sites you can download it. So I'm using the latest uh, latest one. I'm downloading it from sourceforge.net. So here it is saying your download will start shortly. Let's wait for it. So now you can see it is being downloaded. So once the document is downloaded, let's go to the location and get the file. So this is it. Uh, let's go to the location. So here it is. Double click on it. See, uh, at that time, you'll get something like this. Click on next. Again, I agree. Then uh, you don't have to click on anything here. Let it be. And now click on next. Then install. So now they're extracting all the files and folders and they'll be placing it under the C drive. Mostly you won't have to do anything. After this, you'll be asked whether you would like to launch the launch code blocks or not and then finish the setup that's it it's as simple as that so now let's see what the code means so here the first line is ash include stdio.h in the second line you have void mean third line there is uh, there is an opening curly brace and inside the opening curly brace there is printf hello world my first program in quotes and then you're closing it with a semicolon and then there is again there is a closing brace so now there is hash include stdio.h and everything so let me give you an example let's imagine that you're going to a, a shopping mall and then you have to, you, you're going to the grocery store and in the grocery store what happens is you have to buy carrots but to find the carrots where should you go you should go to the section of the vegetables you don't know where the section of the vegetables so you ask someone or the uh, salesman there you go and ask them do you know where the section of the vegetable is and they'll show you where the section of vegetables you'll go to the vegetable section and you'll get the carrot you want so here the reason why i have said said that is we need the same here uh, there is uh, you can see the program is used for printing a particular sentence here and for printing that particular sentence what have we used we have used printf opening bracket in inside the opening bracket in quotes we have put some certain uh, certain sentence and that sentence is being printed to the screen now what is printf printf is a function not just a function it is a predefined function which was already whose uh, code was already written so already written means along with the uh, c language uh, they have also written certain predefined functions that is which have been which for which the code has already been written so that it will be easier for us to perform task task so here uh, printf is such function using printf we have printed the sentence hello world my first program now print these functions they are uh, you can see in our computers or laptops or anything these files will be kept under folders and these folders will be uh, under some directives so in the same way here printf what they have done is they have kept it printf is a function they have kept it under a header file now a header file is something which will contain a set of functions 
So the header file used here is stdio.h. STD IO, stdio means standard input output. Now under the header file standard input output, they have placed the function printf. That is the def in under the header file or you can tell under the file st standard io uh, they have kept the definition or the they have kept the code for the function printf. Since we are using printf what we have to do printf is placed under stdio. So, so we have to tell the computer that uh, I need stdio. Therefore, that is the reason why we are putting ash include stdio. That is we are telling the compiler that we need the function under stdio.h so please link stdio.h header file here so ash include ash include the first line that is ash include stdio.h is also called as a preprocessor command so preprocessor as the name suggests it is something which has to do uh, before the actual processing so preprocessing before processing so there is a preprocessor the preprocessor what it does is it will check the check the code for preprocessor commands that is commands which start with the symbol symbol ash you can see here there is ash symbol here ash include stdio.h so once this once this uh, line is found by the preprocessor what it does is it will check the line ash include okay so the program is saying to uh, include something in the program what is it? Uh, what should we include? stdio.h. We have to include standard input output header file into the program. So that means so what it means is the all the functions under the standard input output header file, the code of the standard uh, functions in the uh, standard input output header file will be loaded into the program. This is actually when you are compiling the program or when you are executing the program, you won't get to see this. But actually this is what happens in the background. The preprocessor will check for the the first line that is preprocessor it will check for the preprocessor commands and it will link the header file with the program here why are we using stdio.h because the definition for the predefined function that we have used in the program that is printf it is a predefined function which is available under standard io input output header file that is why we are using stdio.h here now the next line that is uh, void main void main represents the beginning of the program that is it is a it is like telling the compiler see this is the begin this is where my program begins that is this is where my coding begins main pro, main part of the program begins so then there is after void main there is opening bracket closing bracket please make sure it is uh, there is nothing else in the middle it's just an opening bracket and a closing bracket after that click after clicking enter you will have a curly brace here to the left and then you have so and uh, this curly braces means the this opening curly brace represents from here it starts that is void main this is all set void main opening bracket closing bracket curly braces so from here the program starts the first line is printf hello world full stop my first program full stop closing double quotes closing bracket semicolon now you can see in sentences that in English after writing a particular after you have finished writing a sentence you will put a full stop and then you will start the next sentence. So uh, here in uh, C what you are doing is to show that it is the end of the particular command you have to you have to enter a semicolon semicolon means at the top there will be a dot and then there is a comma dot comma a full stop comma that is what is being used semicolon. Please make sure it's not colon, it's semicolon. At the end of the, uh, after after you have entered printf, then opening bracket, then what you have to print in the screen, that is put under, put inside double quotes. After printf, there is opening bracket, then there is double quote. After double quote, you have to print, I mean, what you have to print on the screen, you can write it. Hello world, full stop, my first program. So, then after that, I have closed the double quotes, I have closed the bracket, I have, I have put a semicolon. That is, that is a delimiter. So here, the, my first command, I mean first line, or uh, first line of code stops. So I will, I mean, uh, end of code, end of that particular line. I am putting semicolon and I am going to the, see if I click here, I have to go to the next line. Okay, now let's see what this will print. See, hello world my first program so by now you have 
uh, I guess you have understood how to print a particular uh, sentence on screen. So this is just a simple program. Uh, it's not necessary that you have to give hello world my first program. You can give anything. Let it be your name. So my name is uh, this Maya. I'm giving my name there. Make sure to save it. After saving it, you have to compile and run. Otherwise, if you don't, uh, if you don't save it, what will happen is uh, the code, the same code which was written before, which was uh, compiled before, the output for that one will be printed. So let me give you an example here. Okay, Vismaya uh, Uday Kumar. That's my name. I've saved the program. Control S. Then build and run. See, it's printed here. Vismaya Uday Kumar. So in the same way, try it with your name. Uh, so this is a part where it gets interesting because uh, here in C program, I mean in any programming language here, you get to make the computer to do a particular task and you get to instruct the computer. That is you get to write the instructions for the computer. Here I'm telling like this is a simple program where I get to tell my computer to, to print my name on the screen. So same way. This is this will be your first uh, homework for you guys Not first homework definitely. So this is going to be the second homework for you guys. Uh, write a program like watch this video, understand the concept well. If you have any doubts, please uh, feel free to ask me. I'll let you know. I'll uh, explain it again to you guys. And then uh, the first task is to write a program to print your name. So here I've said that void main represents the starting of the program. So what is this void main? Void main uh, here actually it can be written in two types. It can be written as void main and int main also. So what does void means? Void means there's nothing. It's just empty. So here uh, this is a function. Main is a function. So when you're writing a function, uh, you can what there are two options available. You can return a value that you should give back a value or you can just leave it like that. You can give no value at all. So here when I mention void main, it means that I'm not giving back any value. So this might be a little bit uh, confusing, but uh, it's simple. It's just uh, it's totally up to you. If you're see, this is simple. Uh, if you're giving void main, you can just write the code as it is. But if you're giving int main, it means you have to give back an integer value. So after this comment, you have to include return, uh, it'll be return zero. I'm giving return zero. You can give return one, return two, anything. It's totally up to you. I'm saving. After saving the program, I'm executing it. Uh, this one. See, there is no change at all. It totally depends upon you. You can either give it as a uh, void main or int main, but make sure if you're giving int main, you will have to include a return statement where uh, return a number. It can be zero, it can be thousand. I'm giving 19 here. Save and execute the program. It doesn't bring out any changes. See here, process returned 19. Just it's not the output, it's the uh, status. It's the status that is being given out by the computer. So it is telling that this program has returned the value. That is, this program has given me back the value 19. That's it. I mean, it, it doesn't include in the output, but it's something, uh, it's a statement which is given back by your computer. So if you have to, if you would like, to, I mean, if you want, if you feel like you have to include int main, then you can just return a value. If you're using void main, you don't have to uh, include the statement of return. So, uh, yeah, so that would be your first uh, assignment for this day. Not assignment, it will be a homework. If you're interested, you can try it out. A program to print your own name. So we have seen an example. Now let's see uh, the notes. Here uh, you can see it's the same code, but there's a slight difference. There is an extra line over here. My first program in C, and also after printing hello world inside the codes, it's just not hello world. There is backslash n. Let's see what that is used for. So here I've included a same line, but it's not. It was uh, my first program in C, right? My first program in C. Okay. Now let's see what that does. I'm saving the program. Execute. It's just the output is the same. It has not affected that particular line has not affected the output at all. So do you have any guesses what what actually it is? Uh, 
it is internal documentation or it is also known as comments now what is comments used for these comments are used for our but our understanding see if i write this code and i leave it tomorrow tomorrow i come and open the code i don't understand what the program is used for but if i include a command comment there that uh, this see here my first program in c or i'm including a comment there like um my program to print my name so if i see this i'll understand okay this program is used for printing my name so that is why mostly comments are used for this is also known as internal documentation internal documentation is when you include comments so that uh, for i mean there might be uh, when uh, this this is just a simple program but when you uh, when you start coding there is going to be a long set of code and then uh, when another person come and looks at your code they might not be able to understand what you have written so it would be better if you include code so that not only you another person who has come to see your code can also understand what you have written so that increases the readability of the code now uh, now let's see what slash in does so after printing after giving my name with the space okay with the without a space anything i'm giving slash n save the program compile and execute the program see now uh, you can see that before before slash in see okay let's see before and after slash in before slash in compile and execute this may oday kumar next line you have process return 19 return 19 because we are returning here 19 number 19 now let's see with slash in slash slashes back uh, backslash in backslash and save and compile and execute now what do you get see here after vismaya uday kumar that is after my name is being printed there is an extra line a line is left and after that line process return 19 is given what is the reason so slash in means it represents enter since we cannot represent enter here enter in a code or we cannot just in, uh, type like please enter after this name no we cannot do that in code so what we have uh, what so there is something called escape sequences escape sequences are used to represent these kind of keys which are not uh, which cannot be written by us so uh, slash in is an escape sequence which represents the ent functionality of the enter key so in a if you, in a document if you are typing your name and if you press the enter key automatically the cursor goes to the next line in the same way here after you have entered something that is after you have uh, written something and if you pre uh, if you put slash in that is while printing something uh, if you put slash in it means after printing this particular line please send the cursor to the next line that is what it means so if you want more than uh, two or three it's uh, it's fine you can see you can enter as many as you want control s now let's see what will be the output Okay, I haven't closed the output screen. That's why. Okay, now it's fine. Just save it. Now click on it. See, I got one, two, three, four. I guess. How much did I give there? Yeah, I've given four of them. Four enter keys. So four times the cursor will go down. And after that, the uh, statement comes. Process process return nineteen. So that that is what slash in does. In the same way, the for slash in there is slash t. Slash t represents tab space. so there are a lot of them we'll we'll see each of them one by one in the next sessions or in the coming sessions itself so here you can see there is something else too uh, here it is given star slash sorry slash star star slash this uh, so anything that you would like to make a comment it should be inside this star slash star and star slash so this this particular a uh, symbol combination is for multi line comments that is if your line goes for more than one then you should use this star, slash star and star slash but this one is just a single line so for you it would be enough to include slash slash so slash slash means it represents a single line comment now let's see what will be the output of course you can guess it uh, uh, my name will be printed in the first line and for the next four lines it will be blank see there it is so uh, i think this must be very easy for you uh, you know what let us try to put slash slash in front of the code that is here printf is a predefined function 
and it, a printf is used for printing something on the screen. So what will happen if we put slash slash that is if we make that particular line of code a comment. Let's see. Save it. Execute it. There is no output. So if you make anything uh, a comment the compiler will not consider it at all. This is an example. Okay. We have seen uh, different programs that is we have seen two programs to print a particular output. Now let's see how you take an input from the user. So to show you this or to teach you this, I'll be taking an example of accepting a number as input from the user and then printing the same number. So let's see the code for that. So what you have to do is since you're accepting a number, you should uh, you're going to tell the computer that to store this number, I need a variable. So you are going to accept an integer number from the user. So you are going to tell the com uh, compiler that you are going to uh, you are going to use a variable which is going to store an integer value. So for that, you what you have to do is you have to give int int a. So a is my new variable, and in the a in the variable a, I am going to store the value which is being given by the user. And the value which is given by the user will be an integer value. Therefore, I am giving int 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 space a semicolon. That is enough. Now, the next step is to. So, this is variable declaration. This step is called variable declaration. Now, the second step is you have to accept the input from the user. And you have to store it in the variable a. Let us see how that is done. Scanf modulo d comma ambersynth a. So now you know printf is the function used for printing a certain sentence or a value. Now in the same way scanf is the function which is used for taking an input from the user. The uh, function scanf is also predefined also it is present under the same header file standard input output header file. So it is as include stdio.h. Now here what it means is modulo d represents integer value. Uh, the value which is given by the user which is an integer value should be stored in a. That is what it means. Now printf what you have to do is you have to print the value which is stored in a. So you are giving printf a. So there is a difference between this You have to print the value which is stored in A. But I am giving you different examples here so that you will understand it better. Print A in quotes. First one is A in quotes and after that I am putting slash in so that it goes to the next line. Now print if I want the, uh, this is another one, print if modulo D. Here the percentage, uh, I am referring to the percentage symbol as modulo d. Printf modulo d comma a semicolon. Let us see what will be the output of this. Here I am just, uh, I am just entering please enter a value. Please enter a value. And that's it. Now I am saving my program. After saving the program, I am compiling and executing it. See, now the input, uh, the, the output has come. Please enter a value. The program is asking you to enter a value. I am entering 5. Enter. See, in the first line, there is A is being printed. And in the next line, 5 is printed. Why is that so? See, whatever you put inside quotes, it will be printed just like that. If you want the value of value which is stored in A, and if you and you are using the printf inside quotes, you are putting A, and if you uh, execute the code, you will get the character A printed on the screen. You won't get the value which is stored in the variable A printed on the screen. So if you want the value which is stored in the variable A to be printed on the screen, then the syntax is this thing: printf. Printf opening braces modulo d. That is, you have to print a value. You are telling the compiler that I am going to print a value. And then you have with after comma, you have to mention uh, which variables value should be printed. So, this is the program. Here, uh, 
let's just make it as a comment see now the compiler won't uh, the re, e, uh, there was two options available either i can take it off like this i can just click on backspace or what what i can do is i just can put two forward slashes so it will it won't be considered by the uh, compiler while compiling it i'm saving the program okay and close output screen let me close it okay now execute it please enter the value i'm entering an integer value 4 see now i got the output 4 so this is a simple program where you can accept an integer from the user as the input and then you are printing the same value uh, let me go through it once again here i am this is a variable declaration variable declaration means uh, the input that i am going to be uh, that I'm going to access from the user is an integer value. So this integer value has to be stored, has to be stored in a variable. So for that purpose, I'm declaring a new variable here a and this a will store integer value. So therefore I'm giving int a and that is it. That's it. There's no more. So I'm giving semicolon and then uh, here is if okay then printf um, uh, after that i'm going to ask the user to enter a value so printf i have to give a hint to the to the user to print a value so for that i'm giving printf in quotes inside quotes i've given please enter a value you can give please enter a value anything whatever is given inside the quotes will be printed as it is so here i've given uh, a message for the user and after that i'm accepting the input here i'm telling see i'm scanf is for accepting input modulo d integer value and the integer value should be stored in a after that i'm va printing the value which is stored in a so print a va print value value which is stored in a output will be this see this will be the output so here you can see i've used something extra which is inside quotes i'm using modulo d while accepting a value as well as while i'm printing the value so here modulo d is called a format specifier so a format specifier it is used when you're uh, here it is here since i'm accepting a value and since i'm printing a value i'm using a format specifier the same form um, this is for this format specifier for integer value is modulo d for a character value it is modulo c modulo c means percentage c so uh, according to the input that you're going to get from the user the format specifier changes please make note of that that is uh, for for a uh, integer value the format specifier will be modulo d that is percentage d so now let's move to the next topic which is data types in c now what is data types uh, data type is like the different types of data which is available in c uh, let's take an example. Normally, we have different languages, right? Uh, we have Tamil, we have Malayalam, we have English, we have Hindi. There are a lot of them. So, uh, there we have a lot of alphabets. We have a lot of numbers. We have uh, we have alphabets. We have numbers. We have special characters and everything. So, in the same way, uh, like in C programming language, there are different types of data. So, we are going to learn about the different types of data in C now. So, let's see. Data types specify how we enter data into our programs. That is, see, in the remember in the last program, uh, since we were going to accept an integer value from the user, that is, since we were going to accept a number from the user, we entered in we declared the variable as int a. That is, in a variable, I'm going to store the integer value. So, such these data types, it tells the compiler what kind of data is going to be used or stored in that particular variable. So there are particularly there are two uh, types of data, data types that is mainly the data types can be divided into two. One is pre primary data types and the second is derived data types. So primary data types is something which is already available in C. Remember I told you about predefined functions. The functions which is already available in C is called predefined functions. When it comes to data types, the data types which is already available in C is called primary data types the data types which are already available in c is called primary data types whereas the functions which is already available in c is called predefined functions 
so the examples of prime that what are primary data types the fundamental data types in c uh, the fundamental data types are int float char and void so int represents integer float represents floating point that is uh, numbers like 3.14 or 22.574 anything with a decimal point i mean anything with a floating point in it is called a float no, float is represented using float and a character character means it can be special character or all those alphabets or anything and a void comes then then void comes void means there's nothing next is derived data types derived means as the name suggests it it is actually derived from something from what it is derived here it is derived from the primary data types primary data types are data types which is already available in c so using those data types we have come up with some new data types those are called derived data types and the example for such data type is array structure union and pointer let's see what these are now see these are the uh, this is a table showing the the uh, c data types in c is mainly divided into two primary data types and derived data types under primary data types we have integer floating character and under derived data type we have array pointer structure and union let's see what those are now integer data type integers are used to store whole numbers so when once you declare int a then in that variable a you can store any whole number but and here there is given some range say range means what i mean uh, the number stored in that variable must be must be in between the, these numbers that is if you are going uh, it must be greater than it must be uh, it must be between minus 32768 and less than 32767 please note that uh, anyway uh, i'll give you the link to the notes in the description you can go through it once so if you are declaring a variable uh, in as int then the value stored in that variable must be greater than minus 32768 and less than 32767 now there is some this is int uh, this int can be used to store negative values as well as positive values that is it is signed int signed int means my both uh, negative values and positive values can be stored and the memory taken to store such a variable that is store such a value will be 2 bytes now one byte is made up of 8 bits so 2 bytes means 16 bits will be allotted for integer that is if you declare a variable as int a then for a 2 two bytes of memory will be given to store the number so if you are declaring uh, if you want to store a negative value it is enough for you to give int uh, variable name you don't have to give signed int because automatically it will take it whereas uh, there is you want to store a number which is greater than 32767 so there is uh, you can use something called an unsigned int unsigned int means the range won't start from negative Minus thirty two thousand seven hundred and sixty eight. The range will start from zero to sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty five. So anything between the numbers zero to six hundred sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty five can be stored in a variable which is declared as unsigned int, and the uh, memory allocated for it will be two. That is when you are declaring a variable as unsigned int a. A is the variable. At that time you can store any number from 0 to 65535 in the variable a and also in the memory in the uh, in the uh, memory 16 bytes 16 bits that is two bytes of memory will be allocated for the variable a if it is declared as unsigned int next we have something called short int or signed short int short int um, so what it means is you are going to store a small number so if you don't want uh, this is actually used when when you think of memory consuming and all sometimes uh, you know you can reduce it that is if you are sure that you are not going to store a very big value in uh, in a particular variable then you can make use of this so that uh, you can see here shortened or sign signed shortened it uses only one byte of memory whereas the normal int or the unsigned int uses two bytes of memory 
so uh, here it is short int or signed int that is you can store negative as well as positive values it uses one byte memory if you declare a variable then that particular variable will consume one byte of memory and uh, that particular variable can hold mean uh, can contain any number starting from minus 28 to 127 including those two and in unsigned short int here uh, in the top you can see unsigned int means it's starting from zero here also unsigned short int means definitely it will start from zero whereas the ending value will be greater will be two times of the uh, ending value for the uh, signed short, signed int see here 127 255 3, 2, 7, 6, 7, here 6, 5, 5, 3, 5. Uh, these two i mean uh, unsigned is used when you are very sure that a negative value will not be used then comes long int long int is when you have to use a really long number like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12, something like really long number that is when you use long int and if you have to store a negative number with uh, uh, more than eight number of digits then that is when you go for long int or signed long int it's enough to give long int it automatically it will be considered as signed long int by the compiler see check the uh, size of taken by the variable which is declared as long int it is 4 bytes that is 8 into 4 32 bits of memory so it is minus 21474836482 plus 21474836472 so any num any variable which is declared as uh, declared with the data type long int consumes or takes up four bytes of memory and can contain any number starting from minus 21474836482 to 21474836472 now it's not necessary that you have to uh, by heart all these values because normally uh, in, in most of the conditions uh, the num the number that you are going to use is not going to be more than a 10000 so if you are sure in such cases normally you can go for int and if you are sure that uh, your number won't go more than uh, a 120 120 level then definitely you can go for short int and then if you are going to use a very big number you can go for long uh, long int so if you are going to use a very small number short int if you are going to use a normal number that is uh, it's going to be more than 100 200 then please make sure you use uh, normal int and then that normal int in the sense signed int or unsigned int then uh, if you are going to use a number which is going to have more than eight digits of numbers then definitely go for long int um, and that's all about integer data type so integer integer if you declare a variable as int then uh, the particular value stored by that variable will be an integer value next we will see what is floating point floating point is used to store real numbers so real numbers mostly they will have uh, decimal uh, they will have a point in it that is 3.14 or 2.141 3.6.24 something like that so uh, we will see like uh, we will see what are the different types they have they are having float double long double we will see what is float so float for float the size taken up is 4, 4 bytes of memory and the range is 3.4 e minus 38 to 3.4 e plus 38. e represents 10 to the power. So, e 3.4 e minus 38 is equal to 3.4 10 to the power minus 38 to 3.4 10 to the power plus 38. So, uh, if a variable is declared as float a that is I am telling my compiler that I am going to uh, use a float type of uh, number and that number I need to store it in a. So that variable a will take up 4 bytes of memory and it can store any value starting from 3.4 10 to the power minus 38 to 3.4 10 to the power plus 38. Now there is double double is used see uh, the smallest uh, i mean if you if you have to store any decimal uh, values not decimal values if you have to store any uh, values with a point in it then you have to use float 
Now, if you're going to store a number with point in it, but has a lot of digits, then you are going, then you will have to use double. So, double uh, the size taken up is eight bytes. For float, it was four, but for double, it is eight. And let's see the uh, num. So, if a uh, variable is declared as double a, then a is used to store a double uh, data type value and the value stored in a can be in the range of 1.7 10 to the power minus 308 this is 10 to the power minus 308 in float it was 10 to the power minus 38 in double it is 1.7 10 to the power minus 308 to 1.7 into 10 to the power of 308 so imagine the uh, kind of number that you can store in this now next is long long double long double uh, this it it's st it starts uh, the smallest is float the next the next big largest is double the next largest is long double so long double is the largest among all three if you have to store a very 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 big number you will use long double so here it is 3.4 10 to the power minus 4932 to 1.1 10 to the power 4932 so you can imagine the kind of number that is used to store in long double so in uh, mostly uh, as of right now you won't have to make use of double and long double mostly we'll be working with uh, data types i mean data type float float and an integer will be fine for us right now so i'm just explaining all of this so that uh, you can uh, you'll know that such kind of data types are also available now we'll see what is character type so character types are used to store character values so see in sometimes of in sometimes in forms and all they'll ask your gender whether you're male or female and you'll have to represent it with m m for male f for female so in such type in such cases you're storing uh, that you have to save that m or f that is a single character right to, to store that character values we are using the character type so if we declare a variable as a character then it represents that that particular that particular variable is used to store a character value so here character or assign character i mean uh, yeah sign character it is used to do uh, this is on a 16 bit machine it will uh, the size is it will uh, take up one byte of memory and unsigned care will take up one byte of memory now we will see what is void type void type means there is uh, see remember the fun uh, remember the program which we wrote in the program first time uh, the int main or void main it represents the starting of the program so void mainly it is used to show what uh, the void it means nothing so when you start the program as void main it means that that particular program does not give out return any value but when you start with int main it represents that that particular program will return an integer value so that is what it is given here void type means no value this is usually used to specify the type of function which returns nothing so uh, that is what void is mainly used for then it's uh, mostly used with functions so here we actually wrote a program with void main but that is just a main program we'll be using other functions also which we'll be learning in the coming sessions we'll uh, learn more about it don't worry now we'll see what is uh, before learning about struct uh, union we'll go see about structures okay it's not given here mm. We have seen the different types of uh, primary data types that are the predefined data types. So let's see what are the different uh, derived data types. So um, let's take an example. We are writing a program to accept a single integer, integer value as input. So for that, first you will declare a variable a of uh, int that is int space a and you will put a semicolon and then you will uh, in accept the input as uh, accept the input by the command scanf in double quotes modulo d comma ampersand a so the input is stored in a so this is the this will be the program to accept a single input from the user now what will you do if you have to accept five 
integers as input from the user one option is you can uh, declare five variables int a int b int c int d int e you can uh, declare five variables and you can use this scanf function for all of the five variables but this is tiring because uh, this is kind of uh, you know it's kind of boring so there is something there is a solution for this uh, it is called array in array what you can do is you can store data of the same data type you can store values which are of the same data type so if you have to store five integer values then what you can do is you can create an array of integer values so that will be a collection of integer values so in the same problem instead of creating five variables it will be enough for you to create an array of size 5 so uh, you can take it as a uh, see let uh, consider each variable to be a bucket and in one bucket you can only put one value so for uh, for storing one value you can use one bucket for uh, storing five values you will have to use five continuous of uh, five buckets but in array what it is is in one bucket itself there will be five small packets and each packet you can store each value that that is what so uh, the actual definition of an array is it is a continuous memory continuous memory which is used to store data values of same data type so uh, in case also you can uh, give mention the size of the array that is if you want to store five values you can declare an array with size five that is you are telling the compile i'm creating an array and i only want to uh, i only want the array to store five numbers because i will only be accepting five numbers in case if you want 10 numbers you can declare the array accordingly uh, i need an array which can store 10 numbers we will see more of the programs in the coming sessions. I'll just give you an uh, explanation of all the, the, the all the derived data types. So we have seen array. But uh, the thing about array is uh, if you are storing numbers, then you can only store numbers in the array. If you are storing characters, then you can only store characters in the array. That is, uh, if you are uh, creating an array with data type, that is you are telling the compiler, I need an array with a uh, array that can store integer data integer values then all the array uh, array i mean in the whole of the array you can only store integer value if you declare it as character type array then it can only store character values now we will see what is a structure now let's consider an example where you have to accept a particular person's gender as well as the date of birth in the format of a date month and day month and year is this possible using an array no because the reason is in an array if you declare it to be integer then all the values that is stored in the in the array should be of integer data type but here as of this example you have to first the uh, value to be stored will be a character because m or f that is male or female it is going to be a single character and after that you are going to accept three integer values first one will be the day that day second one will be the month third one will be the year this is not possible using arrays now this in such kind of situations you use something called a structure the structure is used to store store different datas of different data types now all these you can take an example there are two buckets in one bucket you can uh, put only one color cloth but in the other bucket you can put different color clothes now the bucket where you can only put one color cloth is an array and the bucket where you can put different colored cloth is called a structure so uh, in structure you can store you can store data of different data types whereas in arrays you can store data of the same data type also in the array you will have to uh, an array will have a size factor and you can either you can uh, give the size that you can mention that uh, the size of the given array 
the size of the declared array is this much or the size of the declared array is a particular number or you can uh, keep on adding the elements to the array and the compiler will automatically count like okay there are five elements in this array five uh, five contents in this array so definitely the uh, array size is five in structure okay let's uh, let's imagine you have created a structure for uh, accepting the uh, gender as well as the date so here what happens is for uh, accepting a character value the space taken is two bytes two bytes and for date day month and a year the, uh, for each integer input two bytes of memory will be allocated so this since there are three integer data types and uh, one character data type there will be uh, th 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 that is going to be 7 bytes of memory is going to be allocated for this uh, structure. Now let's see what is a union. A union is similar to a structure but the difference is in structure uh, like in the uh, according to the example given for character variable a particular amount of uh, particular amount of memory will be allocated and for the integer variables uh, respective uh, particular amount of memory will be allocated that is for each variable memory will be allocated they don't have to share the memory but in union what happens is they will uh, union is also considered uh, union is also used to store uh, different values which have different data types which are of different data types but the difference is in union the compiler will check which of the following data types contains the height occupies the highest memory and they'll take they'll take that particular memory and all the variables will share that one single memory this is the main difference between array structure and union in array array will have a particular size that is we can mention the size and in the array we can store uh, only values which are of same data type Whereas in structure, we can store values of different data types and also uh, for, each, uh, for each variable, memory will be allocated separately. But in union, what happens is, uh, they, the compiler will check for the uh, variable, which, variable which is uh, given the most number, most, uh, which consumes most uh, memory or which, uh, which is allotted the most memory and all the other variables will have to share that memory with each other. So hope you have understood this. These are the uh, main uh, derived data types. We will be working more with it in the coming sessions. Now there might occur, uh, you might have a mm, doubt that why am I, why, uh, like whenever I am declaring a variable, why am I giving it as A or B? It's totally up to you. You can give any names, but there are some rules also for naming a variable. So variable is something uh, like variable is used to store a certain value. So as of now, that explanation will be uh, like it is also called an identifier. See, in uh, you, like usually in mathematics, when you are solving something, you will take let x equal to 1, let x equal to 2. So in the same way, here we are taking certain variables. So uh, like normally in mathematics, what we do, that's almost that that's similar to what we do here like we are taking a particular variable and then we are storing a particular value in it that's the only thing uh, with the variable names so variable names uh, like you, it can be a single character variable name or you can even it can be uh, like the, like there are certain limitations for the like how, what kind of names you can put for select for variables so since this is just an introduction introductory session i have used a simple one which i am taking it as a b c d and all so in the coming sessions i'll be letting you know about the uh, the rules for naming a variable and what kind of alphabets or what kind of characters can be used whether we can place a digit in the front or a digit in the starting of a variable or not and uh, we'll see more about it and now we'll see what uh, more of array here uh, I like to show you something when you create an array this is what actually happens see here see here it is int a of 4 okay here it is 5 okay when you create int a of 4, a of 5 
this is what actually happens five memory locations five continuous memory locations will be taken and only integer values can be stored here and all of these can be accessed and all of these belong to the same array a i just wanted to i uh, just wanted to uh, make sure, make uh, make it clear and this is what happens in a of five means this array, an array is created and only integer values can be stored here and also the name of this array is a now what happens if this is the kind of array declaration you give int a of square bracket if you're mentioning it is an array then the syntax is to give square bracket now syntax is something called grammar like uh, how it is the rules and regulations you have to follow when you're uh, writing something in a particular language like when you're speaking in your uh, language or when you're writing something in your language there is going to be grammar and you're also going to have a lot of symbols and something which you should uh, which you should be adding at a particular kind of situations so here also uh, according to the kind of code you are writing and according to the kind of code that you would like to write you have to uh, follow certain set of rules which is called uh, certain set of rules so here when you, uh, that is called syntax here if you are creating an array then what you should do is after int leave a space that is int is the data type here and a is the variable name then after that you have to include a square bracket inside square bracket if you mention a value that will be the size of the array now what i've done is instead of mentioning the size of the array i have directly given the values which should be stored inside the array that is inside curly bracket i have separated each value by comma this is an integer array please make note uh, we'll uh, go through character arrays and uh, everything in the next session here we just we would just go through the basics right now so here i've given one two three four five so five values now what will happen here this is what will happen Two, three, four. In the char a char uh, an integer array uh, named with the name a will be created, and these values will be given in the array. So this is what this is how an array is represented, like a, uh, a rectangular box. Like normally, this is a single dimensional array. That is, there is just there is only there are five bo five boxes here, and I have given. Zero, one, two, three, four, and I filled it with four, five numbers. So this is what an array looks like. In the coming sessions, we'll be working with programs using all of these arrays, union structures, and variables also. And uh, tomorrow we'll be, I'll be back with the uh, other new session. If you have any doubts with any of the topics that I've uh, taken now. Please do let me know. You can either mail me or uh, let me know down in the comments. I'll be leaving link to. Uh, leaving link to the notes that, uh, that I've used in the video. Also, I'll be leaving a link to download the IDE. So if you have any doubts, please feel free to let, uh, let me know or you can just Google it. And uh, today's uh, homework for you guys will be to write a program to print your own name. And another program will be to uh, accept a number, multiply it by 10 and print, the, print that number. So this is your, uh, this will be your homework. It's totally up to you. And if you'd like to practice more, please do so. And uh, please let us know if you have any suggestions or feedbacks. You can go to our website and leave feedbacks and suggestions. We'll definitely go through it and we'll come back to you. And also don't forget to take the test after you have attended the video. And in case if you have any doubts, just you can go through the video again and then take the test. Uh, the test will be open only until 9 o'clock, 9, uh, 9 p.m. today. So please make sure you attend the test before that. Thank you so much and keep learning.